Hey everyone, welcome back to Topher Drives, where today we have our hands on something I've been wanting to drive for so long. This is the 2023 Genesis G90 3.5 with an E supercharger. Ever since Genesis showed this new gen of G90, I have just been dying to get behind the wheel. So I'm so excited that we finally have one in our possession today. We are out in our normal location where uh, we have somebody practicing their parallel parking skills, which I absolutely respect and love that they are uh, trying to better themselves in that way. And we're gonna try and make this quick as to not make them too nervous. But anyways, here is the Genesis G90. I absolutely love this new design. They've gone very kind of stately and old money with this. And it's such a classy, elegant and pure design. Um, BMW, are you listening? This thing makes a statement in a whole different way. I saw photos of this car and I thought, okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. But actually seeing this car in person and being in its presence is really something else. It's kind of hard to explain the vibe this car gives me, but it's almost like rich out east Hamptons, tea time at a really nice hotel, pulling up in a pin suit and stepping out of this beautiful Genesis G90. They've just, they've done such a good job with this design and I'm so happy that Genesis is finally finding, forging their own path with these new cars. And this one I think is the best looking car they've ever made. I'm just blown away by how this car is able to make such a statement so simply. You don't have to be so outrageous again are you listening, BMW? Um, so let's go ahead. Actually, we're gonna pop the hood on this car, which we don't often do, but uh, I wanna show you all the way this hood opens. Now, some of you may know, I own a BMW Z3M Roadster, and uh, one of my favorite parts about that car is the big clamshell hood. And this G90 has a very similar style, massive clamshell hood. And the way they've integrated these fenders, I mean, look at this. You've got this continuous piece of metal here that kind of goes down into this with these uh, turn signal lights or hazard little marker side lights, which look awesome with the hazards on. I've got some B-roll I can show you of that. But uh, under here, we have our 3.5 liter turbo V6. From this powertrain, we are getting 409 horsepower and 405 pound feet of torque. This thing weighs about 5,000 pounds, so it isn't the fastest thing in the world, but it kind of wafts off. They've done a pretty good job tuning this V6 to be just about as smooth as it can be. Being that it's a V6, of course, it isn't the silkiest powertrain in the world, but I think that they've done just about as good as they can do with what they've had to work with. Okay, uh, lots of plastic under here, lots of room to the sides of this. I think they probably could have fit a V8 under here. Thank you, Jeep Grand Cherokee. But, um, uh, you know, this is just what we have in this car, so. It's what we have to work with. Beautiful badging, Genesis badging. I always thought, when I saw the first iterations of these cars, I always thought they were going so hard to try and copy Bentley, to try and copy Rolls-Royce, whoever else. But man, I just can't get over how happy I am for Genesis to be finally um, you know, using some very unique design language. Let's take a look in the trunk, which is power, of course. Excuse my hoodie. We've got a luggage net here, and then we've got underneath the luggage net, we've got a goop kit and some other things. Nothing really too interesting. I just wanted to show you all the operation of this trunk. Very nice and smooth. We'll take a quick look into the back seat, and then we're going to take this thing out on the road and uh, let this person continue their parallel parking lessons that they're giving to themselves. So stepping in to the G90, this is something that also blew me away with this car. So the 7 Series that we drove on this channel a couple of weeks ago, that was about a $140,000 car. And I kind of went above and beyond saying, oh, it has power doors. You only get these in a Rolls Royce, but you can also get them in the Genesis G90. Not quite as intuitive as the BMW. Uh, for example, that's as far as they open with power. You have to push them the rest of the way, but you can use either this button or the one I just showed you to shut the door completely. So very Korean, very Genesis of them to give you multiple different ways to do things. In the BMW, it's very precise. There's one way you can do uh, each certain task, but with this being a Genesis, you've got the button here, you've got the button here, and um, you'll kind of see that theme recurring as we do a tour of this interior. But I'm actually going to go up front and start the car. 
This back here is a screen to control, you know, your window shades and your climate control and everything else. And you've got this big volume knob in the middle to control your infotainment up there uh, on the front or in the front. But uh, I really want to go out for a drive and talk about the way this car drives because that is kind of what I'm trying to make this channel about. I'm trying to differentiate myself just a bit and uh, having this little special drive route that no one else uses is cool. But... There it goes. Okay, I don't know why it freaked out there for a second. There are also manual releases for the door down there if you were to uh, get locked in this car if it had a dead battery. So, a couple of ways you can shut the door as well. As I said, they give you multiple choices. You can press this button here and the door will shut. You just gotta make sure you're out of the way or when the door is open, you can hit this haptic little you know, button that blends into the door right here. You can tap that and the door will shut. That's the way I would recommend doing it because it's less of a risk of getting hit by the door as it's shutting. But man, I just, I love this angle of the car. I love these 21 inch wheels, which I generally don't care for large wheels on cars, but they just work on this thing. And this gray paint, which I also usually don't like, uh, they've just absolutely knocked it out of the park with this thing. I usually don't get too excited about cars, but the way this thing looks. Man, oh man, I am a big fan. Okay, that rhymed and I didn't mean for it to rhyme. Let's hop in to the driver's seat of the G90 and start it up. So along with those twin turbos under the hood, we have a 48 volt mild hybrid with the E supercharger. I don't know, admittedly, the specifics of how all of that works, but I know that it all comes together and makes quite a silky smooth startup procedure, at least. Like any other mild hybrid car, it just kind of wafts to life. You don't hear a starter motor going, which is nice and adds to the luxury experience here in the G90. Of course, we have a power adjust steering column. We've got a split folding armrest. And probably the biggest complaint I have with this car is still no wireless CarPlay. Come on, Genesis, you need to get in to the 21st century. You need to join this class the rest of the way, go all the way and give us wireless CarPlay. I'm sure within the next couple of years, we will see it. And they do actually have it on some of the lower end Kias and Hyundais. I mean, shoot, I was driving a Kia Rio last year and it had wireless CarPlay, but they can't give us uh, the same feature in their $100,000 flagship. It is just a little bit strange. But uh, okay, I'm gonna throw the phone here in the center console just so we can run our Apple CarPlay. You all can see how that looks on the screen. Very, very nice. Okay, we're gonna run Waze as this goes here. And let's actually take a look at our Monroney while we're in here. Here it is, 2023 G90 3.5 TE supercharger, all wheel drive. We've got an eight-speed automatic in this car. Total price, $100,370. So just over that six-figure price point. Saville Silver, Saville, forgive me if I said that wrong, and a Bordeaux interior. This is kind of on the lighter side of Bordeaux, a little bit brown, but I guess I could see what they're on about here. It does have some red hues to it. Uh, also in here, we have some very nice forged carbon. There are just things in here that you don't see in other cars that are in this segment. I mean, who else gives you forged carbon as trim on the interior of your large flagship sedan? We've got Alcantara on the roof and we have some vanity mirrors, which I actually meant to show you while I was in the back seat. But uh, actually, you know what? We're gonna step back there. We're just gonna step back there really quick and we're gonna show you just a couple of things in the back seat because I would feel silly if I didn't in a car like this because that's kind of what this thing is all about. I mean, it does have a chauffeur mode, which we'll show you once we're out on the road, but we have these vanity mirrors like you would find in the back of a similar car of the 90s era. I know the W140 Mercedes S-Class has some very similar appointments in the back seat. We've got a console back here and here's the screen and everything you can do with it. It's basically the same as the screen you get up front. You've got all of these different options. And here's something that I really like about this car. They're really feeding into this whole like house vibe in this car. So for climate, you've got a fan. Uh, for massage, you have like a little feather thing. But here's where it starts to get 
kind of silly. For shades, you have a literal shade that you would see in a house. And then for lights, you have like a stand-up lamp that you would see. Uh, another thing I wanted to show actually that this, this is also something that I quite enjoy is you can change the color of the lights in here. So if you turn on all of the lights here, you can see you've got some reading lights up here and in the back. You can pick what color between cool and warm. So, you know, the spectrum between blue, orange, and then you can have normal in the middle, which is kind of just like a white. You can have them more blue or you can have them like a warmer orange. So I keep them on the cool blue because it looks the best on camera. When I was shooting my night drives and everything, it brightens things up just a bit more. Go ahead and turn those lights off. You've got controls for your climate control, of course, that's quite standard. You can control all of the seats from this screen besides the driver's seat, of course, but you can control your passenger seat from here. You can control this seat as well as the seat that I'm in. You can control all of the different sorts of massages, set your durations, all of that in here. This is for all of your sunshades, but again, you have multiple ways to do it. You can do it in the screen or you can do it with your window switches right here and you can do both seats from both sides. So if you're sitting on one side and you want that window shade up, you don't have to reach over. You can just do it from over here and uh, you can of course open them both from the screen as well. So that's quite nice having all of those different ways to do things. And those are our lights again. So multiple different ways to get to things, but I just like this whole kind of design they have. And then we have our power functions for our seats here on the side. And if you want to put this away, you actually can, and it'll just go away. You can slowly drop back down. Nothing is forceful. Everything is just very smooth in here. Wireless device charger. And like I said, this acts as a volume knob, but we have no media going right now for copyright reasons, obviously. Um, and you've got memory functions for the back seat. Okay, let's hop out of the back seat for the last time. And uh, we're gonna take this thing out on the road and talk about what it's been like to live with this. Yeah, of course you'll have that because it is a Hyundai after all. Um, but let's talk about what it was like to live with this Genesis G90 this week because I have had this car since Monday. It is now Thursday. So wrapping up my week pretty much with this thing. And uh, we'll go out on the road and we'll just kind of have a nice little chill drive. If you guys have watched videos on this channel before, um, especially if you watched the one last week on my Porsche Cayman S, you'll know that this road surface is kind of rough and it's sometimes loud, but uh, I'm looking forward to you experiencing this G90. That is a Dodge Rampage. Check that out. Excellent. Okay, good luck with your parallel parking. Here we go. I'm looking forward to you all experiencing the NVH here of the G90 on this road surface because you'd think with these 21 inch wheels and low profile tires, it would be quite loud. It is whisper quiet in this car. You know, if you've watched other videos on my channel driving on this road, how loud the road surface is. And you can hear it a little bit, of course, but we just float along here in the G90. And that's what cars in this class are all about. This was one of the few that I hadn't driven yet. Um, of course, I've spent time in the 760i. You all have seen that video. I spent time a couple years ago before I had the Topher Drives channel in the Mercedes S580. And also I've spent time in the Lexus LS way before I had this channel, but the car is essentially unchanged. So I have driven the latest version of the LS, the S-Class, the 7 Series, and now finally the Genesis G90. The only one I haven't done yet is the Audi A8. I think that's the only one that I haven't done. Because Acura doesn't do one anymore. None of the Americans do one. Lincoln doesn't do one. So I think... Kia doesn't do theirs anymore. So yeah, the only one left is the Audi. But this is a nice kind of cheaper alternative. It's hard to argue something in this class as being cost effective or a better value because nothing in this class is something that somebody is buying because they're on a budget. Uh, they just simply buy something because they want it in this class. So how does this car do at that? The biggest thing for me with this Genesis G90 is just uniqueness. Genesis has finally found their own voice and this car really will set you aside when you're in valet out front of Nobu and everyone else is pulling up in their Mercedes S-Class or their 
uh, I was going to say gopping, but I do actually kind of like the new 7 Series. So everyone's pulling up in their Mercedes S-Class or BMW 7 Series. You can be a bit different here in this Genesis G90 and still make quite a statement. I've turned plenty of heads in this car this week. Not that that's everything, but it's something that cars in this class should do. You know, they should make a statement. You should have people noticing you when you pull up. And this car does a pretty good job at that, but it's subtle. And it gives it gives off a better vibe than the German competitors. It's a bit more honest. And when you see someone getting out of this car, you think they've probably made their money in a very honest way. And I like that about the G90. I like the vibes that it gives off. As you float down the road, you can have a clear conscious conscience. Anyways, so <laughs> how is it actually to drive? Let's talk about that. So the biggest thing that actually surprised me about this car when I got into it is how quick this steering is. It's unbelievable. We have rear wheel, rear wheel steering in this Genesis G90 and Honda Fit, I hope you are gonna let me go. Thank you so much. And this thing turns on a dime. It's wild for a car in this class. Uh, it's almost a bit startling if it's something that you're not used to. The rear wheel steering combined with the already quick steering rack, you really have to judge your, your corners if you don't wanna hop over a curb. Luckily, I have not hopped over a curb this week, but it would certainly be easy to do so if you aren't thinking about it. Actually driving it, throttle response, brake feel, it's all spot on for a car in this class. It's pretty floaty. Steering itself, while it is quick, it is also light. Hilariously enough, I think it could do to be even a bit lighter. And the V6 is pretty zesty when you want it to be. It'll put that power down and it'll get you where you need to go. It'll pass cars on the highway. If you haven't already inhaled them through the massive grill on this thing, you can just wisp around them. Okay, so drive modes. We have sport, eco, comfort, and if you hold the drive mode button, it puts you into chauffeur mode, which all I've been able to gather is different transmission tuning. It'll shift a lot sooner, and it just puts you in like top gear. You can see we're revved at 1400 RPM. I assume we're in, yet we're in eighth gear. Just floating along here smooths everything out. It doesn't really do anything back there. I thought maybe when you put it in chauffeur mode, it would like lift up the sunshades and do some sort of thing, but I'm happy it doesn't because the BMW 7 Series that we just drove, we're gonna go into comfort mode again. The BMW 7 Series that we just drove was kind of a nightmare when it came to the four interior modes that didn't really, I say interior modes because they weren't really drive modes, but it would change so much about the cabin that you just never wanted to go into them. So I appreciate that chauffeur mode is simply a drive mode. All four modes in this car are actual drive modes. Sometimes simple is nice, and the G90 has really perfected that formula. We're actually gonna drop into sport for this corner. So you can see how this big 5,000 pound sedan hustles. I'm not gonna be on the brakes here. Come on, baby, attention my seatbelt there. <laughs> It is still a heavy car. You've got quite a bit of body roll from this air suspension, but it'll boogie and we're gonna get to some uh, some more corners up here and we'll push it again. Let's go into Eco, I'll show you what that's like. Eco is like one step above chauffeur as far as smoothing things out goes. Ah, oh, and it's, I can just whisper. Oh, let's talk about this. So. We have a perfume in here, similar to something you'd find in the Mercedes S-Class, and it smells quite nice. There are actually two perfumes in here, and you can cycle through them with that button down there. It's a haptic touch, and you can tell it how much perfume you want, and then you can also cycle through the perfumes. I forgot how I actually did that, but it had a red perfume bottle the day I picked it up, and it now has a blue perfume bottle, so I'd imagine that, well, maybe one of them ran out. I don't know, but this blue one smells quite nice and it's been spritzing the cabin. I've noticed it mostly when you open the door and you let air out, it replaces that air with some perfume, which is quite nice and it just makes the experience just that much more elegant in here and makes you appreciate the car. I'm a big smell person. I don't like when I get into a car and it stinks. And funny enough, actually, Hyundai had some issues with that uh, on some of the roller cars, the Palisade. 
uh, especially was known for being a little bit of a stinky vehicle when you picked it up new. So it's nice that they've remedied that as well as uh, given us some perfumes. Okay, let's drop us down into sport. And let's hit some twisties. We've also got the option to manually shift, but you don't really need to. The transmission, the eight speed in this, pretty much always knows exactly what to do. Brake pedal feels pretty good. Of course, this is a really heavy car, so you still gotta be pretty careful. There you go. I mean, that's just about all you need in something in this class. 400 horsepower should be the industry standard for something like this. We're gonna drop back down into comfort. Um, actually, yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna stay in comfort for a sec. Once we go around the corner up here, we'll put it back into sport and we'll do an acceleration. But let's just kind of float for a second. The ride quality is just sublime. I cannot believe how soft of a ride they're able to achieve with these 21 inch wheels. I mean, I know a lot of it is down to the air suspension and the fine tuning of the dampers and everything else, but this is the best riding car I've ever driven with wheels this big. So good job, Genesis, on that front. Is there anything I don't like about the G90? Well, I don't like that it doesn't have wireless CarPlay. And of course I've somewhat praised this 3.5 liter, but man, would this thing be perfect with a V8. A V8 would just complete this car and it would just be untouchable. The fact that it does have a V6 or even an inline six, I think even an inline six would make this thing even smoother. The V6, while it is smooth, I've said it, it's very smooth. It's just about as smooth as you can get for a V6. If they put in an inline six or a V8, this car would be unreal. So. I don't dislike the V6, but it's something that I would change if I had the option to put a different configuration of powertrain under the hood of this G90. And no wireless CarPlay. I'm really, really thinking here, what don't I like about this car? God, even, I mean, the Bang & Olufsen is excellent. It's not S tier, it's not the best I've ever heard, but it's pretty dang good. All right, we're gonna drop ourselves back into sport and we're not gonna brake boost it, but we're gonna lean into it and see how it gets off the line. Yeah. Even in sport mode, the gear changes are very smooth. They're hand delivered by a butler. Here you are, sir. But he's a quick butler. He's smooth and quick to hand you those gear changes. Okay. Into comfort. It's my favorite mode. <laughs> As we float along for the rest of our drive. I have been just spoiled lately with some of these cars, and I'm really still disappointed. We had the BMW XM a couple of weeks ago, and I was in Florida doing some stunt driving. And uh, I was not able to bring you all. Oh, corner. <laughs> I wasn't able to bring you all a video on that car, but hopefully we'll have the label red or whatever it's called. I was really looking forward to it, and this is for a silly, like, me reason because I was like, I can title the video BMW XM. This is 23 Rich. Because, of course, I am a big um, believer in the 04 Rich philosophy to cars and this honestly this kind of tailors to that a little bit but I don't think it's unnecessary enough to fall under the 23 rich category as the BMW XM is but we've had the XM the 760i was great this has been good next week we've got the Kia EV6 GT that's going to be a good one as well as a Mark 8 GTI that'll be fun maybe we'll if we have time uh, we'll shoot something in that but I'm also gonna be gone next week in Wisconsin at the Midwest Automotive Media Association, MAMA, their spring rally to drive a bunch of cars. There's gonna be a lot of cool stuff there. The Mustang Dark Horse is gonna be there, though we aren't allowed to drive it, but we can ride in it, so that'll be cool. Uh, the Lucid Air is gonna be there. The Rolls-Royce Ghost is gonna be there, which I've actually reviewed one of those. Videos over on the Topher, if you're curious to see my thoughts on the Rolls-Royce Ghost. 
uh, not one of my best takes in the world, but I only had about an hour with the car, so I had to just kind of make do with what I had. But there's going to be a lot of cool stuff at this rally, and I'm going to try and bring all of you some videos from there as well. The Topher has really been pushing me to crank out some more content for this channel because we've been doing really well, and I appreciate all of you for that. It's the coolest thing ever. We've been gaining subscribers at a rate that I never thought would be possible. We're inching our way to 10,000, which is so amazing. I cannot wait to hit 10,000. Uh, by the time this goes up, I should be at eight, about 8,000 is what I would guess. So we're getting there, and it's all thanks to all of you that like to watch me put a camera on my silly little forehead and just drive these cars and give you my commentary. And I'm in a good mood today because I really like this Genesis G90. And I hope that you're able to kind of understand what I'm trying to say about this car. This is a nice option for somebody that doesn't want to be in that same sort of association of someone that's buying an S-Class, someone that's buying a 7 Series, someone that's more of a free thinker, someone that maybe would have driven a Saab in their early years, now wants to move on to something a bit more sophisticated, stately, and would look nice parked in their brick driveway. You know, they've got the nice arches on their house that aren't too showy, but they're classy. Maybe a nice brick house with the brick driveway and some nice shrubbery around and the circle driveway with a fountain. And they wear like a, like a uh, what's it called, a pea coat, and they have a pipe, perhaps. That's the kind of buyer I envision for this Genesis G90. And I respect that buyer. Maybe a monocle as well. I think they would kind of have that. This may be what I would choose. But they're all so good. That's the issue. The 7 Series is a fantastic car. The looks would be probably what would keep me away from it. I understand the appeal, but also it just, it makes a statement that I don't know that I would want to make. But when you're in it, it doesn't matter. It drives great, and you all can go watch my video on that car. It's a fantastic piece of engineering. The S-Class, it's always been great. It probably always will be great, and it's honestly the industry, industry standard for this segment of car, and it is still fantastic. The S580, it's blisteringly quick. It also has perfume on the inside. It's beautiful to look at, though it is a little bit boring. It gets the job done, and you'll be happy with an S580. What else? The Lexus LS, it'll run forever. If you want to buy a car in this class to be the last vehicle you ever buy until you die, the Lexus LS is the car for you. But there's just, there's something about this G90 that I just, I find very attractive. It's something different, and there's a cat out in that field. See him? That's a large, very large cat. So if you want something that's going to set you aside, that makes, that you want something that'll make you feel a bit more special, this may be the car for you. I mean, really. You can have it in some nice colors. I think you can have it in Genesis's signature dark green, which is probably what I would do. It's just such a beautiful thing. I mean, it really is. So Genesis, notes, give me this car, but give me, you know, I'll, I'll live with the V6. Give me wireless CarPlay, please. And if you're feeling quite cheeky, give me a V8. And this would just be, I would, I would have to have one. I'd have to sell everything I own, go and have one of these. If it had a V8 and wireless CarPlay. Or an inline six. I don't know if I'd buy one with an inline six, but I think it would it would help this car. What's the what's the deal with people with companies not wanting inline sixes? Everyone had inline sixes. And then I guess I guess a fair amount of inline sixes are coming back. We've, we're seeing that from Mercedes, we're seeing it from Mazda. So it is a good thing. Inline sixes are making a return, but Genesis, are you listening? <laughs> it would be quite nice. Ugh. You all can't tell I've had a coffee today, have you? I certainly can't tell. <sighs> I hope you can appreciate some of these drives where we do talk the whole time, and sometimes we go out, we go for a drive, we don't say much. But, and that's Topher drives. <laughs> I, need, I need a platform where I can just be myself, and this is that platform. So, I'm happy you all have stuck around with me this long. We've got a lot coming. Am I buying any other cars anytime soon? Man, I hope not, honestly. I need to get some use out of the cars I have, and then once we've filmed a fair amount of videos on the cars that I do have, maybe we'll buy some more. 
I was just watching the Meekum auction yesterday and a Buick Regal T-type pace car went across the block and it sold for like 17 grand or something. I was like, wow, I should have had that. It was very cool. It's like a like the Grand National body style. Okay, I'm just rambling at this point. We're almost we're almost done. We're almost to our little parking lot that we like to end at up here. The sun is setting. I'm in a big flagship with forged carbon on the inside and it's been just such a good day. So, what do you all think of the G90? Would you have a G90? What do you think about my comparison between the other cars? I need to drive an Audi A8 because maybe that's the best one. I strongly doubt that it is, but maybe it is. So I need to get behind the wheel of one of those eventually. But what do you think? Would you have an S-Class? Would you have a 7? Would you have a G90? Would you have an A8? Or would you have a Lexus LS? Or I guess Volvo halfway has one too, the, uh, the S90. That's quite a nice one as well. I don't know that it's quite up to the luxury standard. Oh, you hear that? That's the other thing I don't like about this car is it does have a couple of rattles on the inside. And I'm going to give this car the benefit of the doubt. It has 9,700 journalist miles on it. So we can assume that this thing has been ridden pretty hard. But that vanity mirror back there on the passenger side rear, it does rattle. And it is a bit irritating. But I don't really notice it too much because I usually have the Bang & Olufsen blasting. So we're usually good as far as that goes. But overall, quite a nice thing. I'm super happy with this car. And well, I guess I'll wrap it up as the sun sets over the cemetery right here. We'll wrap up. I don't even know what this parking lot is. I hope I'm allowed to be in here. I'm probably allowed to be in here. I don't. Even, I, I really don't know what this place is. Oh, you know what? Let's talk about one last thing. This dial shifter, one of the biggest issues I had with Genesis is that you've got these two knobs side by side, and sometimes you'd hit one when you meant to hit the other, which if you're meaning to shift and you hit the infotainment knob can sometimes mean that you go a bit further than you were meaning to go, and if you hit the shift knob when you were meaning to hit the infotainment, if you're at a low enough speed, you could do something that you don't want to do. What I like now, it vibrates when you go into reverse, so you know what knob you're touching. So that's kind of nice. Anyways, that'll wrap it up for the Genesis G90. We got 20 MPG on that run. Not too bad. Let's hop out. I'm sure there's... I love that about the Korean cars too. They give you that little exit chime. I'm sure there are things I wanted to talk about that I forgot to talk about. But if I did, head over to the Topher and watch his comprehensive review on this car. He's got a really good driving review of this exact G90, actually. He had it over the winter, and uh, we were just, or I was just able to get my hands on it now, but that's okay. Had a great week with this thing, and boy, am I gonna be sad to see it go. So thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you sticking around this long if you have. And again, comment which flagship is your favorite, the Germans, the Japanese, or this entry from Genesis. Cool, well again, thank you all so much, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.